Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to find the work required to pump water out of the spout where we have a tank that looks like this. And I have done a few examples of other problems where I showed you how to find the work required to pump water out of a spout. So I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker, assuming you kind of have an idea of how to do these problems. If you want to check those out and get a little bit more, you know, deeper explanation of how to do them, go ahead and just click up there. That'll take you to a playlist uh, where all those work problems are. So as usual, we're going to want to start pretty much by labeling our XI star variable in our drawing here. So again, that's, you know, usually, of course, you can do it differently. You can pretty much call it whatever you want to call it as long as you uh, you know, account for that accordingly. But I think it's usually easiest to just say that your XI star is basically the distance that you have to pump your I flare out. So basically the distance from the spout down into our tank as we go through this. And once we've done that, what we want to figure out first is basically an equation for the volume of the I layer of our water. So you can kind of imagine as uh, we kind of pump down through this water here, Imagine breaking it up into a bunch of infinitely thin layers. Based on the shape of this tank, each of those infinitely thin layers is basically going to be an infinitely thin cylinder, right? A little disk of water, basically. So our volume of our ith layer of water is going to come from the equation for the volume of a cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So pi is just going to stay as pi, obviously, that's uh, just a known constant. And then what we need to do is come up with an equation, which depends on xi star for the radius and maybe the height of our disk. So our ith layer of water, as we go down through here, you can see that, you know, obviously up here at the top, our disk is much wider than it is down here at the bottom. And since the edges of our tank here are straight lines, that is going to result in basically the radius as we go from a wide radius down to a narrow radius is going to change linearly. So basically this equation for the radius of our uh, disks or our layers is going to be a linear function. Just like in my last video, we had a similar type of tank which created a linear function. And we're going to use the same method as we did in that one. So the method that we use basically is to say that we want to basically come up with two points that would sit on this linear function. So the first point we can say would just be when xi star is zero, when we're at the top of our tank, this top layer here, our xi star would be zero. And the radius at that point is six feet. So we'll say it goes through the point zero six. And then when our xi star gets down to the bottom of this tank, when xi star is eight, the radius of that disk is three, three feet. So basically we need a linear function that goes through these two points. So first we wanna figure out the slope, right? So the slope of that linear function is gonna be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which would just be six minus three, or I'm sorry, other way around. Our y2 is our second y value, so three minus six, x2 is gonna be eight, minus x1 is zero. So that'll give us three minus six is negative three, over eight minus zero is eight. So negative three eighths is gonna be the slope of this linear function. So then we're gonna create our linear function, which is gonna be y equals our slope, which is negative three eighths, times x minus x0, where that x0 is just some x of a point that lies on this function, plus y0. So we can just take any point that we know lies on this function. Let's just pick this one, 0, 6. Since x is 0, that should make things pretty simple for us. We'll plug in x equals 0 for x0 and y equals 6 for y0. So plugging those in gives us y equals negative 3 eighths times x x minus zero plus six. Now we can just simplify this a bit. Uh, x minus zero is just x, so we're just gonna get negative three eighths x plus six. 
And, you know, we could kind of confirm that this is accurate by plugging in uh, different x values and make sure it actually makes sense, right? So when x is 0, we should have a radius of 6, and we would get that. And then when our xi star is down to all the way up to 8, so we're 8 feet deep in this tank, we should get a radius of 3. So plugging in 8 here is going to give us negative 3 plus 6, which is 3. So that does seem to check out. And like I said, since the walls of this, uh, this tank are straight lines, you know, if we look at it from the side, basically, they're straight lines, which means we are going to kind of descend from a radius of 6 to a radius of 3 in a linear fashion. So this, this should definitely, you know, work for the radius of the ith layer of our water. So plugging this in for, for R, except we'll use Xi star instead of X, will give us negative 3 eighths Xi star plus 6. And again, that radius is going to be squared. And then we're going to multiply that by the height of each disk. Well, the height, as you go down through and look at all these infinitely thin layers, typically you just want to call that delta x, which basically just means the change in x between each layer as you go down throughout. So this is going to give us the equation for the volume of our ith, ith layer of water. So since the units that we have here are feet, we're doing this in, you know, imperial system of measurement, we're not using metric system, we can go straight from the volume of the ith layer of water straight to the force acting on the ith layer. We don't have to find the mass first. And the reason for this is we know that the weight of water is 62.5 pounds per cubic foot. So you want to keep in mind, weight is different than mass, right? Weight already accounts for the gravity acting on that mass. So when we're doing this in metric system, we have to go from volume to mass and then to force. But by taking the volume of our ith layer and multiplying it by 62.5 pounds per cubic foot, which is the weight of water, that actually does not give us the mass, it gives us the force, because weight already accounts for both mass and gravity. So we've already got our gravity and our mass accounted for there. So that gives us the force. Then we need to figure out the work required to find the lift the ith layer of water out of the spout. And that's where my Calculus 2 study guide comes into play. So I do have a link down below where you can go get yourself a copy of my Calculus 2 study guide. Should be a huge help to you as you work through Calculus 2 homework, study for tests, whatever it is. It's available for instant download, so you can go grab that and start using it today, immediately. So just go down below, there's a link in the description, at the very top of the description. Just click that, go get yourself a copy of that, and I'm showing you how to use that equation right now. So that work equation that's on there is that work is force times distance. So all we have to do to figure out the work required to lift the ith layer at this point is to multiply the force acting on that ith layer times the distance that we have to lift the ith layer up. Well, that is exactly what xi star represents, right? xi star is just the distance that we have to lift that ith layer up to the spout. So multiplying this by xi star should give us the work required to lift that ith layer. So that would be our equation for the work required to lift the ith layer. Now what we need to do is sum up all the, those works to get the total work required to lift the whole tank of water out. So to do that, we need to set up an integral where the bounds of that integral will be basically the bounds of all the different xi star values, right? So when we're at the top of our tank, the top layer of water, right up here at the very top, our xi star is zero because that layer is already at the height of the spout. We don't have to actually lift it. So it's being lifted zero feet. So our lower bound is going to be zero. And then as we go down through this tank, our very bottom layer of water, which would be the biggest value we would get for xi star, is going to be lifted eight feet. So we have to, our xi star is going to go from zero to eight, basically, meaning the bounds of this integral are going to be zero to eight. And then, we integrate this function here, except we would 
you know, change it to be in terms of variables that actually make sense in an integral. So that would basically just mean 62.5 pi times x instead of xi star, negative 3 eighths x plus 6 squared, and then delta x is just going to change to dx. So then we should just be able to integrate this integral. So basically, I'm not going to show you all the steps of evaluating this integral. Um, you can do that on your own. Uh, I would definitely recommend doing that on your own. But if you do evaluate this integral, in, you know, integrate this function, uh, you know, just expanding out this and then distributing this throughout, giving you a polynomial that you can then just use the power rule to integrate and then evaluating that from zero to eight is just going to give you 33,000 pi. And then the units on this is going to be feet pounds. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I've got a bunch of other videos on my channel about different Calc 2 topics. So be sure to hit the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon so you're notified of any new videos I come out with. And I'm sure together we'll be able to get you some, some really good grades in Calc 2. And be sure to check out my study guide below as well. Thanks and see you next time.